This video is sponsored by Squarespace. We'll be talking more about them at the end of this video. So I've been making these countdowns of my top 10 and my second top 10 favorite exercises lately, and people seem to enjoy that. But then one commenter said that they found it a little bit confusing. It was too much. How would you program all of this? It would take too long. And that's before I've even added the next 10. I want to make a list of 30 in total. So at first I got a bit bristly about this. I'm like, what do you want? You've got 10 exercises here. Most workouts are going to involve 10 exercises. And as somebody who thinks it's really important to train every aspect of your performance, rotation, mobility, all that good stuff, you know by now, I find it really hard to narrow down exercises. It's like, sure, you could do just three exercises, but you'd be leaving loads on the table. You'd be lacking in all sorts of areas. So, you know, what do you want from me? But then I thought about it and I thought, Adam, this guy is issuing you a challenge. Think of it as a thought experiment. If you only could give someone three exercises to get the maximum amount of performance from just those three, what would those three moves be? And I know that a lot of people would find this useful because a lot of us do want something simple that we can just take away and apply really easily. We want something quick that's gonna give us the most bang for our buck. For many people, the big three means squat, deadlift, and bench press. And whilst they're useful, they're all in the sagittal plane. They all train max strength. They don't involve much mobility. So I wondered what is my big three? What's my big three for all round performance? Now this is a different list than my top 10 exercise. It's different from what I would do personally. It's different from what I would program for anybody because I've chosen these exercises with the understanding that you're not doing anything else at all. So you're not gonna get a lot of intense work on a single area, but you should get a very broad full body workout. And I'm pretty proud of what I came up with. I think this list of three, whilst it's always better to do more, if you want something that's gonna carry you over with the basic amount of full body performance, total performance, then I think these three are as close as I'm gonna get. And it has been interesting and fun coming up with them, and I'd love to hear yours in the description down below. And we need to come up with like a catchy, marketable name. I was thinking some alliteration, like the functional three. So what are the functional three exercises? Well, we're gonna start with the lizard crawl. Now I like crawls a lot, as you guys know, but I'm talking specifically the lizard crawl here and performed in the way that I like to perform it. Now this is giving you all kinds of stuff. We won't go down nice and low on that one side and then bob up as we're going. That's making this essentially a one-armed push-up with each step. This is great, of course, for training your pecs, your triceps, your shoulders, and in quite a decent way as well. Having your wrists in that position is great for strengthening them and building wrist mobility. Your core not only needs to stay rigid, as your body needs to stay parallel to the ground, it also needs to not twist to one side when you're putting your weight on just one hand, but it also needs to intentionally twist when you're bringing your leg up to the side. So you have anti-rotation and rotation here as well. You'll be pushing off your feet as you move forwards, which makes it a little bit useful for your calves. You're gonna be on your tippy toes. And as you bring your leg up to the side, this is great for training a little bit of hip mobility. Not tons, but certainly better than nothing. And I made a whole video talking about how important hip mobility is because it allows us to get deep into a squat. It allows us to drop into a Cossack squat before a roundhouse kick. Poor hip mobility leads to back issues, knee issues. So yeah, this is huge. So we're getting all of that from one exercise. So this is your starting position. Notice you've got your right arm forward, left leg forwards or vice versa. This is what we mean by contralateral. Then what you're gonna do is reach forwards with your left hand and your right leg. As you do that, you're going to be pushing yourself up on that side, making it, as I say, almost like a one-handed push-up. This is where you're gonna get that pec training, tricep training, and shoulder training. At the same time, you wanna make sure you're bringing your hip up nice and far next to you as you go, like this, and you should feel a slight stretch there, getting that little bit of hip mobility in there as well. You're gonna be keeping your torso strong so that you're not sagging at the waist, so you're getting that bit there. And then at the same time, as you bring up, you're naturally going to be twisting your body slightly Getting that little bit of rotation as well. Get extra credit if you go up and downhill, which will place more emphasis on the shoulders as you're going downhill and more emphasis on the legs as you're going uphill. Also get a little bit of glute and stuff in there as well this way. And because you're crawling in lots of different directions and stuff, it's also highly dynamic. And that's what we want to go for here. We want movements where possible that aren't just linear repetitions, where every rep is slightly different. Repetition without repetition, as you would say, because this builds more resilient motor patterns, more resilient strength, because in the real world, things aren't in straight lines. And if you wanna prepare yourself for as many situations as possible, especially if you've only got three exercises, that's how you wanna do it. And it's moving in all three planes simultaneously. As you bring your legs up to the side, you're moving in the frontal plane. As you rotate the core, you're moving in the transverse plane. And because you're crawling forwards, you're also moving in the sagittal plane. How many exercises can say that? 
It's also fun and engaging, it's great for brain development and agility and coordination because it's a contralateral movement, because you're moving your hands and legs in opposition. It's just fantastic. On the lizard crawl can be performed to give you strength endurance, as in you can go a long distance, or if you really feel it as you go down onto one side, it can be used to develop a little bit more strength. So yeah, it's very versatile in that sense too. So that's why I highly recommend the lizard crawl as the first of the functional three. Each time I say that, it's annoying me. Next, we need to do something for the legs. And I was struggling a little bit here because on the one hand, I wanted like a squat, something that's just gonna build big, strong legs and also give you that mobility dipping down. But on the other hand, I thought we really need a hip hinge in here of some sort because that's so important for picking things up off the ground, for preventing injury, etc. And because we need to fit a lot into a small number of exercises, it'd also be great if we can get some bonus stuff in there too. At first I had a hybrid exercise in mind, I was thinking we could do some kind of kettlebell swing into a squatting overhead press, and that would be pretty good, but ultimately I decided on the crossbody clean and press. So usually we use a kettlebell, you're going to put that down on the floor in front of one leg, then you're going to squat and hinge down, reach across with the opposite arm, bring it up into the racked position and then press it overhead. Note that this isn't a clean and jerk, this is a clean and press because I want that vertical pushing motion in there with it. I want to build actual strength in the shoulders this way. This was one of the reasons I chose this exercise. At the same time, you might notice we again have rotation as we're rotating to pick up that weight. And you might notice that we have both a bit of a squat and a hinge. So we're going to hinge as far as we can go and then squat down the rest of the way to pick it up. Ideally, I'd like there to be a bit more squat in there, but you do feel it in the legs as well as the shoulders. And you're also getting a little bit of a curl in there, a little bit of a pull in there. It's really, really good. I like to do this in a kind of quick motion. So what I will tend to do is to squat down, pick up the weight, and then instead of holding it in that rack position for a second, I just kind of do it all in one motion. So some people say like, is he trying to do a snatch or what? But no, it's a clean and press, but I just do it quickly because I don't want to just be standing there like this, like a lemon. Also, I just find it more fun. I've got the momentum of the upwards movement and I just transfer that into a press, but it's still, like I say, very much a press. We're training the shoulders. We're not training the lower body to develop that explosiveness. This is great, of course, because you're getting that practice for your hip hinge in quite a safe way. You've also got a rotation and often when we pick things up off the ground, we are rotating and there's a bit of a squat. Now, if we combine the little bit of leg stuff that we're getting from the crawls with a little bit of leg stuff we're getting from our crossbody clean and press, then I think this is, you know, close enough considering what we've got to work with here. So to perform this movement, what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the weight down on the floor in front of the opposite leg. You're gonna hinge and squat down and grab with the opposite hand and bring it up into the racked position. When it's in this position, it should be resting on the soft part of your arm. You want it quite close into the body, not out like this. And then you're just going to push it overhead. As you do that, you want to make sure you're keeping your fist straight. So imagine you're trying to punch the ceiling. You don't want that bent, broken wrist position. It's not the end of the world right away. Most people can get away with it with a lighter weight, but if you do it a lot, if you're fatigued or if you're using a heavier weight, that's an invitation to injure yourself. And like I say, we're not doing a explosive jerk movement. We're just pushing because we want to build that strength. And as you hinge down, of course, you want to make sure that you are hinging. That means that you're not bending your lower spine. I've made videos talking about how to do this. And we're going to have a little bit of a squat as well, making it similar to a squatting kettlebell swing, which is actually a variation of the kettlebell swing that develops more ground reaction forces. These exercises, you'll notice that they are targeting specific muscle groups, but they're also kind of full body exercises. So it's somewhere between the two. And the final option on my list is the body weight row. So you're gonna find a bar or two bars that are about waist high to a bit higher off the ground. You're gonna grab them with your hands and you're going to row your upper body up towards them whilst keeping your legs nice and so straight. So as you're putting yourself up, what you wanna make sure you're doing is retracting your scapula pinching them behind yourself. This is useful for developing strength for a range of more advanced movements. It's also really good for your posture and for your shoulder stability. At the same time, you're also getting a little bit of rear delt work in there. This is important to improve our posture because so many of us are always hunched forwards, especially if we're doing a lot of front heavy exercises as well. I chose this more horizontal pulling motion instead of a vertical one, like a pull up or a chin up for this reason. But at the same time, you will find that it does transfer to a vertical pull. It will improve your climbing ability if you're using your arms. And at the same time, you're getting a little bit of work for your torso again, because you're keeping your feet flat on the floor and then you're trying to keep your torso rigid. This makes it anti-flexion. You're trying to prevent your butt from folding in and touching the ground. So you're strengthening your posterior muscles to keep your body nice and straight. This is a really nice added bonus to the move. This was the one I was the most uncertain about. And there is a higher level option, which has some different benefits, 
So if you find that too easy, then what I want you to do is an arched back pull up, grab a bar that's above you this time, but you're going to arch your back so that you're still putting your sternum up towards the bar. And in both versions, you want to touch the sternum onto the bar. And then you're going to pull yourself up like that. This is still more of a horizontal row. It's a lot more difficult, of course, because you're pulling your whole body weight, still getting the rear delt, still getting the rhomboids as you retract the scapula. At the same time, you've got a little bit of back extension. And this is really good for your general mobility and spine health. So that's a perk. I really like it for that reason. And for even more added benefit, I want you to do it from a tree branch. Because when you perform a pull up from a tree branch, again, every movement is slightly different. Hanging from a tree branch rather than a bar gives you extra credit because every single time you perform a pull up or chin up from a tree branch, your hands are at slightly different levels. You're going to have different thicknesses of branch, so you're training your grip more. The angle's gonna be slightly different. All these things mean that you're not just training the same linear motion over and over again. You're reinforcing those neural pathways, but you're building more robust neural patterns, meaning that when you are out in the real world and a movement doesn't exactly mimic what you perform in the gym, your body is better prepared for that. Better prepared in terms of having practiced it, in terms of the fascia surrounding the muscle, and in terms of the stabilizing muscles. So the functional three is the lizard crawl, it's the cross body clean and press, and it's the body weight row. Or, if you're strong enough, the arch back pull up from a tree. So there you go. If you're gonna do three exercises and you want your body to be as performance as possible, then these are the three that I highly recommend. But like I say, there's always gonna be compromises. There's stuff missing here and the intensity is relatively low. Still, I'm pretty happy that in terms of targeting everything all at once, you've got max strength, you've got strength endurance, you've got mobility, you've got movement in the frontal and rotational planes, you've got wrist strengthening, you've got a bit of spine extension, you've got stabilizing and strengthening the torso, improving hip mobility, building coordination, all sorts of stuff that so often goes overlooked. I'm pretty happy with it. On oh, guys, if you're interested in using these three exercises as your full workout, then head over to thebioneer.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. And there you'll find a completely free mini routine, mini workout, and a little bit of explanation about progressions and things. And you can start doing that right away. Completely free. You can just go and read the blog post. And if you do try this, of course, let me know how you get on with it. But I'd love to know what your three exercises would be if you could only train with three. Or how about if you could only train with five? Are any of you out there going to try using this as your workout? I'd recommend doing it three or four times a week if you do. And the whole thing should only take about 15 minutes. If you want a more in-depth program that includes these exercises, but also a whole ton more for far more comprehensive total body performance, trains not only things like max strength and mobility, but also coordination, balance, endurance, even brain function, then check out Superfunctional Training 2.0 in the description down below. It comes with an 80 plus page ebook, over two hours of instructional training video, and a routine that you can perform pretty much from anywhere with very minimal equipment. So yeah, check that out. But either way, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Now let's talk a bit about today's sponsor, Squarespace. So Squarespace is a website building platform that makes it extremely easy for anybody to get their own website up and running. That means no code, no experience with web design. Literally anyone can do this, and I'm talking within 10 minutes or less. You start off by choosing a template you like the looks of, then you use their intuitive fluid engine to simply drag and drop the elements you like where you want them. That way you can take something that already looks great and then customize it to your exact specification. Not only is Squarespace extremely easy to get started with though, it also comes loaded with all of the features you could possibly need to take your website and your business as far as it could possibly go. In fact, many of the biggest brands on the web use Squarespace Space. For example, it has advanced publishing features. You can schedule your posts, use advanced formatting. It has a fully integrated commenting system for managing your community with threaded comments, replies, and likes. Seamless social media integration if you want to include your social posts directly on your website. There's e-commerce tools. There's gated members-only content for revenue generation, whatever you can think of. And you can add even more features thanks to third-party plugins, allowing you to do all sorts of additional stuff. For example, on the e-commerce side, you can add things like global shipping and inventory management. If you want to learn more, head over to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer for 10% off your first domain or website. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for sticking around till the end. Bye for now.